oh man there's so many good videos coming for you guys including this one so first of all if you are a lawyer and you haven't subscribed yet take a moment right now click somewhere down here to subscribe and if you get value from this just make sure to like this video all right so today we are talking about how to automate your documents for your law firm there is a bunch of different tools that allows you to do this these days i have a list of about 12 different companies however i found one company called document that is very simple and very easy to be able to help you automate your documents what is autom automating your documents it means your clients are able to fill out some kind of online intake they answer questions and automatically documents are created for you so if you are a lawyer and you need to get you need to make documents for your law firm this video is going to talk about it again the company name is called document i invited the founder uh, dorna to, to come and uh, share with us exactly how to do it and I'll add the link if you're interested in uh, getting a demo or signing up for documents. I'll put all the links in the description below. All right, let's go to the video. All right, so this is for document automation. So I'm gonna, there was a poll question uh, that asked, did you start auto automating your documents? Six of you said yes, and nine of you said no, but I've scheduled time to do that. And then three of you have questions about that. So for those who have questions about the document automation, let's ask those questions while we have Dorna here for the next 20 minutes. And Dorna can answer for you. Um, also, we didn't share, Dorna, you want to share at least a PDF automation? Uh, creating a PDF? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. How, um, what have you guys seen so far? Have you guys done, uh, I guess we didn't do the... Uh, I just did the Microsoft Word. Uh, just the Microsoft Word, okay. Awesome. Um, so let me just go ahead and I'll share my screen in a minute. And I, I typically recommend that when you're automating documents, you have the option um, of automating Word documents or PDF documents. Um, PDF documents, I would usually only use them if you're required to. So it's a court form or government form and you're required to use it. Otherwise, the Word version is always better, in my opinion, just because a Word document is by nature like a malleable document that will move and, and become smaller and become larger and be a lot prettier. You can always take a Word document and, con and have the system turn it into a PDF at the end of that process too. So that's always an option for you there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna go ahead and share my screen and I'm just going to automate a really simple document. I'll show you like a simple field. Here we go. Um, so if you guys remember, we have the document system. You first go to your dashboard. You can create a new workflow. A workflow is a set of questions that generates a set of documents. So it can be multiple documents and those documents can have a ton of logic attached to them as well if you don't wanna generate all of them at one time. So the first part of the process is creating the data input. So what are you gonna gather from the end user? Um, I want to gather usually probably one of the first questions you're going to ask is going to be their name, uh, if you're going to make it client facing, or you may be using this solely internally, in which case you might just phrase the questions differently. You'll just maybe put name here instead of what's your name, because you want to make it um, friendlier for your internal audience, if it's you or your um, paralegal, your assistant or associates who are, who are using the system. So I've created a series of questions and I, I think we got a pretty good view of this last time. So I won't go into too much more detail on this unless you want me to. Um, all right, perfect. I'm seeing Sam nodding. And the second piece of the process is loading your document. So uh, when we load our documents, you for Word documents, you'll set that up inside of Microsoft Word and load it here. For PDF documents, uh, we're actually gonna tag them directly on the screen here. So I'll give you an example. I'm just gonna pull in this fee waiver document. And this fee waiver document happens to be a, a it's a California court form uh, fee waiver document, as which maybe some of you guys may have uh, seen before. It's just one of the judicial council forms. And what you'll do is when you load it, as you can see, it, it showed up at the bottom of my screen as this final PDF. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on it. And when I click on that PDF, it's going to show me all the fields that exist inside of that PDF. Um, and it's gonna have the names of those fields. So uh, we're actually working on some, some improvements here where you'll actually see the PDF directly on the screen uh, in the next few months. But right now what you see is the name of the underlying field. And then what you'll do is you're gonna tag these fields. So I know that my, you know, my full name field, I wanna tag that to 
a question and I'm going to tag it to, um, in this case, let me say, I'll just tag it to employee name. Uh, so there's a few different options that you have here. You can either tag it to a question. You can uh, leave it untagged, which means nothing will be filled out there. Or you can enter text. Entering text might be something like, let's say you want to always include your law firm name in a certain field. You could put that there and then it'll never need to be filled in. Um, another thing that it goes really well hand in hand with PDF documents is invisible logic, which is one of the features I showed you a little bit of last time and I can go into more detail after this. But invisible logic allows you to set values for a variable. So for example, if you wanted the full name to be Jessica Smith, if it's a family law case, but then you wanted the full name to be John Doe, if it's a uh, if it's a an estate planning case, let's say those are your attorney names, then you can set logic to require those fields to be populated the way that you want them to. So uh, that's going into a little bit more detail. So I'll just show you some, a brief run of this. So I tag this full name uh, to that field, and you know what else I can do? I can actually take something like um, like here. I have this field that is a checkbox. Um, it's called lawyer advancing fees and it's a yes or no checkbox. And so if I wanted to make that dependent on how I answer a question inside of the workflow, I could tag that to a question inside of a checkbox question. So I could say, um, you know, lawyer advancing fees is uh, equal to like, I, I haven't created a variable here, but let's say I created a variable about yes, no lawyer advancing fees. Um, I could tag the lawyer advancing fees bubble to that question. Actually, you know, maybe what I'll do to make this more simple is I'll actually just go ahead and go create a question. I think that'll make it a little bit more self-explanatory. So I'll go, let's say the, the question is, is the lawyer going to be advancing the fees? And in every case, it's going to be different. What I'll do is I'll create a yes, no question. And I'll say, is the lawyer advancing the fees? And I'll just call this lawyer advancing fees, just because that's self-explanatory to me. The variable name is kind of like a short version of that, of that question name. And then I'll go ahead and save up here, go to my document, open that PDF again, because I want to actually tag that field. I want to say this value should go here. I'll go down to that question and I'll say tag to question, lawyer advancing fees is Yes. So what this means is if the lawyer advancing fees is yes, then this uh, checkbox is going to be checked. If the lawyer advancing fees is no, then the checkbox will not be checked. Does that make sense to everyone so far before I go ahead and run it and show you what that looks like? Let me know if that's at all confusing. Uh, I don't see anyone saying it's confusing, so I'll move, move forward. All right, let's go ahead and save this and we'll go ahead and run this. And this workflow actually has a bunch of other questions in it because I had, uh, so you'll see that there's a ton of other questions in here that I didn't show you when I added them in. And I'll say, so I'll go ahead and fill those. I'll say, yes, the lawyer is advancing fees. I'll, I had to happen to have a blank page here. I'll say, there's no shareholders. These are some other questions that exist there. This is the, uh, a children question. So maybe I'll say, I have a child named Janie and her favorite vegetable is celery. So just questions I had set up earlier. Uh, my favorite child is Janie and I have signature at the end. And now what I'm gonna do is that on the very last page, you always have the opportunity to review all the answers that you had um, in response to any of the questions that previously existed. So um, I, you know, you can see all the, the list of everything that was, was listed there. And then uh, my documents are generating now. And also being very little. practical for people. So anybody who's considering automating their documents, I would say take your easiest, easiest one that you would like to automate, book a demo with Dorna, let her show you exactly how to set it up and just set that up once. Once you build the momentum, you kind of figure out one, then the second one will be much easier than the third one. But for now, just have a goal. I need to automate my easiest one. Um, Yes, exactly. And I think Sam mentioned this last time, but we have great customer support. So if you even want to just say, hey, I want to sit on the phone with you when I automate my first document so I can learn about the system, book a demo, book a support call 
we'll do that with you and make sure that you're up and running. Um, and then, so let me just finish off this process. And I know there's a few questions that I can answer in the chat too. So we have this fee waiver. So I'll go ahead and open it. And as you can see, um, this uh, name is filled out here as Jane Doe. And um, so I, if I had added a ton more information here, that would all be filled out in the system. Um, but here I was really basic here in, in what I filled out. Um, we can also create conditional output documents here. So in this case, I have all four of these documents being generated. But if I wanted to go here and say that I only want, let's say, uh, if a common example of this is like state, let's say if city state zip is California, then I want the California addendum to show up. And by default, I always want the employee offer letter to show up. And then I want to say if city state zip is New York, I want the New York addendum to show up. You can add all this logic so that on this final page that I showed you, not all the documents are going to be generated every single time. It's just the documents that make sense for that field. Um, I also see that someone asked uh, if you can, if, so, if the client uses lower caps when entering the data, can the fields be set up in a way uh, where they automatically capitalize the first letters of the first and last names? Yes, uh, we do have a feature like that. Um, and one of the ways that you can do that, I'll show you, show it to you in the word add-in and then I'll show it. And then you can also do that in the PDF. So here I had my employee name. When I set up my simple variable, I would choose, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong workflow. Make sure I'm on the right, right workflow, employee offer letter, which has the variable for employee name. So I choose my employee name. You have the option of formatting this in any way you want. So standard means however it's entered, that'll be how it's entered into the system. Um, uppercase means it'll be all caps and first letter capital is what um, Boris asked about in the chat. So that would mean that it would automatically capitalize the first letter because we always know clients make mistakes on that type of stuff. Um, what else? Other questions coming in. Uh, if you have a signature function, then do you have to send it off to HelloSign or DocuSign? Um, so you don't have to. Uh, we we have see people who want to do both. So uh, some people love our signature function. Actually, it's funny because I think a lot of people in California, they like the fact that it's an actual signature because some of the courts, uh, I guess, require you to have the actual drawn out signature. Uh, but some people prefer to have the hello sign DocuSign like stamped on the document. So it's really just up to you as to as to which option you want. But the signature function that's embedded internally is obviously a little bit easier and takes one second to add a question for. Great. Uh, Jonah, do you also know about Docketwise and how- I've whether... actually never heard of Docketwise. Uh, immigration kind of CRN case management software. The question is, you know, what are you using Docketwise for? And whether a document supplements Docketwise or not? That's the question for you, Bella. So. Yeah, really yeah if you're using doc, uh, doc, wise for uh, more of the case management, you might want to continue using it there. Although we are, we have big plans to allow you to, to really do a lot more of that inside of our system in the future too. Um, but if you're using it for automation, depends, do they have forms already there? Um, if you build out the forms in, in our system, then you can, then you'll have that in, in the customized way that you want them to be set up. And one more thing I'll mention, if you guys, especially here in at Legal Funnel, where I know there's a lot of collaboration between, between the group, if one of you builds, if one person as part of this group builds something, you can share it with others. Completely up to you. You can keep it completely private too. But if you want to sell it to another member or share it with another, another member, uh, just ask us and we can, we can facilitate that transfer as well. Great. Uh, Jenny asks, can I use the system to automatically fill out those court forms for us, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, but like sure that docket wise, uh, they have all the immigration forms. So, okay. Yeah. Um, if they have the immigration forms, then, and, and you're happy with the way that they're set up, then I would say to stick with them. Um, but if you wanted to customize them in the way that you want on document, then uh, we're the right solution for you there. Jay says, I know you can integrate to Clio and Stripe. Can you integrate Zapier? Yes, uh, document integrates with Zapier. 
And I'll just show you if you, uh, we have a whole course on Zapier and all the different things that we recommend you do with it. So if you go to help.documate.org, go to the bottom on our video tutorials, we have a document plus Zapier where you can see a ton of different ones that we have sample videos for. And uh, there's much more you can do in Zapier too. Great. Um, Hunter says, is there a way to store client data instead of documents so that when you need to create additional documents for the client, you can automatically select that client's information? Yes, there is. So we have a feature called data manager and it stores every single session of data that comes in. And then what you can do is let's say, let's say you're a divorce lawyer and you know, there's in California, there's like four stages of the divorce process. You fill out stage one. Once you're ready to go to stage two, the second set of court forms, you can take the data that was already stored in the system for the client and push it into that second set of forms. And then in that case, it's only going to ask you the questions that have not been asked before. So client name, you know, respondent name, all that information will be filled out. Anything new, like maybe new financial information, you'll be prompted to answer.